So the trade deadline's over. All-star game in the rearview mirror. Playoff still. Month and change away. Uh, it's pause time. There's not a lot of news. We've got buyouts, obviously, that are sort of rumbling. But we kind of need to take a breather. I'm a little tired of dissecting some of these dumpster fire franchises with every little minute piece of news that comes away. Apparently, Rob Polinka botched a bunch of conversations where he wasn't calling people back. I mean, the, the drama continues. But, yeah, yeah, he wasn't answering phone calls. Just, like, look it up. I don't want to talk about it. I don't. Like, just look it up. I don't. He's so bad. I just, like, there's so much raw material and fodder for me. It's like red meat and a hungry Rottweiler. I am the Rottweiler in this situation. Rob Palenka is the red meat in the Lakers. And just how much joy I get from shit-talking them. But, like, it's boring to you, even though if it might be hilarious to me. So let's break down some hoops. But today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite things in the world, WNBA. So there's multiple WNBA stories going on right now. Both of those are actually global news stories. We'll start with what's happening right now in the Ukraine and how that has the ability to affect how the women's game operates moving forward. As everybody knows, unless you've been living under a rock, kind of like I've tried to avoid it. If you need to tell me, if I need some some news, I'm just going to make sure that Twitter tells me or someone on the street tells me. I'm not going to go out here and be be looking for, for see. Hey, did you know? I hear somebody on a train. I'm listening on Amtrak. I got, I got Chris Coons behind me on the Amtrak talking about Mitch McConnell. I mean, you can't escape it, right? So unless you're sitting in your crib playing 2K, uh, you know that Russia invaded Ukraine a week ago. And the economic fallout has been immense. There's been immediate economic sanctions against the, against the Russian state. Um, they've literally tanked the ruble. We've got the owner of Chelsea pretty much being forced to sell the team because he's broke now. All of these Russian oligarchs are losing their wealth. Uh, it is just absolutely bonkers. Russian stock market, which is an aggregate of the biggest companies in Russia, lost 80% of its total value in the first two days alone. Let's just say things are not going the way that the head of Russia, named Vladimir Putin, has anticipated them going. We'll just say things have not been going according to plan. Uh, major foreign investors have pulled out of Russia. The country has been banned from international banking platforms. If you want to wire money from country to country and you're Russian, that's a no. Some people have lost all access to Pornhub if you're in Russia, which is a huge loss. Uh, Russian oligarchs who have built multi-billion dollar portfolios stand to lose everything. So a lot is is happening. Lots popping around the world here. How does this affect women's hoops, though? Let me explain. For years... There has been an unspoken, this is a fascinating shit, unspoken rivalry between various Russian oligarch billionaires. And that has spilled over onto the court. In this case, Russian women's basketball Premier League has been the biggest payday by far for women's basketball players for many, many years. Uh, Folks like Brittany Griner, uh, Brianna Stewart, Diana Taurasi have played for Russian teams for seven-figure or more contracts, which, to be frank, is a lot more money that they make in the United States. They have made well over five times the maximum salary allowed in the WNBA in Russia. It's good business to hoop in Russia if you're a woman. And it's basically just... We'll just say what it is. A dick measuring contest by really rich guys in Russia that decided that the women's basketball, Russian Russian women's basketball Premier League, hard to say, uh, is their little breeding ground for how they end up competing with one another. It's their little, it's like squid games to a degree, only no one gets hurt. In the pa- past two days, it's just like another way of them you know, measuring how good they are with one another. So, the past two days, though, women's basketball players living in Ukraine and Russia struggling to get out. A move made more difficult since Russia has now made it very difficult to fly out, having banned flights from 36 countries and counting. Thankfully, all the American players who played in the Ukraine are out. 
but Russia's war on the Ukraine is going to change the balance of women's ga- basketball for the sh- intermediate term at least. Because who knows? Who knows before the status quo returns in Russia? Who knows when these women who make their livelihoods, where they make the majority of their dollars in the off season, will be able to play there again, right? Will those same oligarchs that I mentioned that lost 80% of their wealth, will they be so inclined to have women's basketball be their dick measuring contest anymore? I, they might just be looking to just hold on, we're going home kind of vibes. You know what I mean? Just hang on for dear life. Who knows? Time will tell. I'm not optimistic. So it will put more pressure on the WNBA to pay equitably now that overseas cash cow has fallen to Putin's ill-timed, ill-planned moves. Which brings us to the real story, the real huge story, something that's been hiding in plain sight. Airplanes, charter planes to be exact. All right, so Sports Illustrated just randomly on a Monday, just a random Monday two days ago dropped one of the biggest stories to be about the WNBA maybe ever. One league handed out record fines against the New York Liberty. Not only did they do that, uh, the WNBA threatened to take the Liberty's draft picks away, and they even floated the idea of not only making the owner, Joe Sy, same guy who owns the Brooklyn Nets, uh, sell the team, but also folding the entire franchise together. It was fucking serious. What could have been so egregious that they would fold an entire WNBA team where there's not that many, be the first one to contract, to have to just close up shop, go home in the biggest market in the country? What could he have done that was so terrible? Was there some sort of some sort of pizza ring, underground pizza ring going on in some basement? What could have been happening? What was it? Tell me. I need to know. Wait. Josai put his players on a, on a charter plane and took them to Sonoma for wine tasting? You mean to tell me that that was so egregious that he would be possibly forced to sell a team and fold the entire New York Liberty as a whole? All because Josai wanted to take them on a team-building trip. All because he wanted to treat his players like male players are treated. All because he didn't want the New York Liberty to fly southwest next to Fred and Karen and their little baby Eli on their way to some family trip in Phoenix. All because of that. Mostly, when you go bird's eye view, it's because Joe Sy, the owner of the New York Liberty, and the owner of the New York and the Brooklyn Nets, same vibe, same intention, same mentality. Joe Sy is willing to do what so many other owners are not willing to do. Do whatever it takes. Pay whatever it takes to show your players you invest in them and you're willing to do whatever it takes to compete and win like he's doing with the Brooklyn Nets. You cannot make that shit up. Here's what happened. Joe Sy. Here's the backstory. Joe Sy, billionaire owner of the Brooklyn Nets, but also the New York Liberty, wanted to give the Liberty a team-building trip to Napa, so he chartered a plane and sent them off to wine country. <gasps> Why? You don't say. Star player Dee Dee Richards, rook, a rookie, said at the podium randomly, they asked her what her favorite off-the-court moment was, and she said Napa. Napa was just so much fun. Napa was an opportunity for us to get together as a team and just be beautiful. And you know what? I love that. I was just planning for days what I was going to wear to Napa once they told us, Josiah, you monster! Shut the league down! Shut the team down! Force this man out! Get him the fuck out of here! Liberty guard Jasmine Jones said that the team owners treat us like they treat an NBA team. That is fucking awful, you don't say. (laughs) Folks, what's the problem here? What's the problem here? The problem is that it violated the WNBA's collective bargaining agreement, which constrains the benefits that you can give players. Is that not the stupidest fucking thing you've ever heard in your life? There should be 
we'll just hold that thought for later. But it gets even more stupid. The Liberty chartered flights for each road game of the season's second half, beginning in August with the trip to Minnesota. And the WNBA was fucking pissed. Because right now they're using commercial flights like Southwest with Brian and Karen and Eli on their trip to Phoenix. You would be on the same flight with Brian and Karen and their little baby Eli crying and screaming when you're trying to get your mind right for your game. That's what's happening now. Josiah was like, this is ridiculous, especially when there's issues with weather, issues with plane delays, issues with everything that comes with being just a normal traveler, which these people are not. Josiah, apparently the punishment that WMBA was floating around was obscene, and Josiah was like, you know what? I don't care. I'm going to continue to do it anyway. You can tell me not to, but I'm going to. In fact, he doubled down, stating that WNBA athletes should be treated like the elite players that they are. And then he went public on Twitter over the fact that he can't fly his own team via charter because he has a lot of money. Joe Sai, as an aside, is the co-founder of Alibaba, which is the (laughs) Google in China. So then he does the most extraordinary thing. He was like, well, because they said, well, this is, this is a competitive balance issue. If your team can fly charter, and which is against the law or the rules of the CBA, and all the other, and all of the other teams cannot, that gives you an advantage that's not correct. That's not right. And it's cost too much money for these other non-billion, quote-unquote non-billionaire team owners, so it's wrong. And then he does this. He found a sponsor to fly all the WNBA teams for three years for free. Yep. Do you know what happened next? Of course they were, all the teams were like, hell yeah, right? No, they weren't like, hell yeah. They were like, absolutely fucking not. The WNBA Board of Governors turned it down. Let me say that again in the back. For the folks in the back not quite listening. Joe Tsai, the owner of the New York Liberty, was so committed to giving his players what he felt they needed to be successful, be ready, and to have no travel hiccups because he's a multi-multi-billionaire. And when he was told he couldn't do that because it gave him a competitive advantage, he found a way for everyone to have the same exact thing, which he thought was the bare minimum for travel for an elite athlete. And the Board of Governors said no. According to SY, if you are wondering why that might be, according to them, quote, here's where it gets fucking crazy. Some owners worried that the players would get used to it and there would be no going back. Others wondered whether players might prefer a salary hike instead. That's not how this works. You can't just say, "Uh, I'm sorry, NetJets. I would prefer that money go into my pocket instead of just you giving us planes. Excuse me? Pause. Let's Let's just say, let's just bring this all back. They didn't want players to get used to what? To get used to being treated like professional athletes the elite athletes that they are they wanted them to be seen and felt as just regular joes on a southwest flight or a delta flight flying commercial you cannot make this shit up dog the wmb it is absolutely bonkers and here you are here i am thinking that major league baseball had a monopoly on being cheap billionaires (laughs) Here I am thinking like it's just them. No, no. Cheap bastards are found in every corner of the world. The league originally, here's what they wanted to do the Liberty. League wanted originally to slap a million dollar fine on them. By far the most in the history of the league. And then they dialed it down to a half a million. Keep in mind, though, that this is a league that has capped salaries at $221,000 per year. That is the super max for a WNBA player. And you wonder. You have to wonder why Mark Davis, who also co-owns the Raiders, uh, owns the Aces, why he decided to pay Becky Hammond a million dollars to coach. 
because he can. Because that's the thing that he doesn't have any restraint over. He can, he wants to, and he thinks it's going to help his team win. That's how you think like a real billionaire who wants to win games. It's also the only salary that's not capped in the CBA. 